So today we're going to explore why a man might choose you over another woman. And really, we're going to dive into what sets you apart from other women. Now, in full transparency, I saw this video on Matt Boggs' uh, YouTube channel. I watched his video. I loved everything he had to share. So I'm going to be sharing much of exactly what he shared, but my own version of it. And it's because I believe when something is true, it's universal. So this is what I think is truth and it's universal. So I'm, I'm thinking back in my own life to those few women that felt different from other women I met. Just felt something felt different. Um, something unique, something special, something safe. All of these types of emotions and feelings were stirred up inside of me. And what's fascinating to me, I said this ever before I became a dating and relationship coach. I said to one woman in particular, I remember this about 15 years ago, um, while we were together, and I'm, I'm going to be candid with you, while we were intimately together, I said to the words, I said to her, this feels like home. This feels like home. I don't want, know what caused me to use that phraseology. It just, there was something about it. That, and the I, what does home mean to everyone? I want to explore that for a second. But what I also thought was fascinating was once I became a dating coach, I heard a woman tell me a man said the same thing to her. And then over the years, I've heard this from other clients of mine that men have told them that you feel like home. So I created a little acronym around the word home of what I thought it might mean. And maybe this might resonate for you. But the H stands for happy. You're happy to be with this person. You feel a sense of joy. You feel a sense of fulfillment. You feel a sense of, of excitement when you're with this person. There's just something unique when you're with someone that feels like home. Now, the O stands for optimistic. Optimistic. And optimistic is that viewing in the future that this person is your 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 beloved this person is the one you're going to go the distance with and by the way I'll be candid with everyone I might have said they felt like home but that shifted later and we'll dive into that in a moment as well but the o stands for optimistic the m stands for she's memorable there's something about her that is memorable in other words there's something about her that you just will never forget and I'm sure maybe you felt this for yourself. I know I've been in the presence of women who I felt a sense of just, they're memorable. You know, there's something unique about them. And the last, the E stands for enthusiastic. And what I mean is I said earlier, you know, happy. I mentioned the word excited, but I'm also, the E stands for excitement, enthusiasm, a sense of delight to be with this person. And that's part of what home feels like. It feels safe. It feels, it feels like, I want you to think about it. Your home, like if you walked into another person's home, you might feel, you know, you might feel, you know, a bit of uh, uniqueness to it, but it doesn't feel the same as when you walk into your home. It's like when you stay the night at a hotel. Yeah, it's a bed. It's a warm place to stay, but you've been on vacation you've had a good time, you've seen the world, you've been to Rome, you've been to Greece, you've been to the Seashell Islands, you've been to the Maldives, you've been to Bora Bora, wherever it is, but there's something about coming home. And what sets you apart from other women is what I'm about to share with you, that feeling from man that it feels like home, okay? Now, as we dive into this again, I want to re reiterate that what I'm sharing with you comes from Matt Boggs. I didn't come up with this. But as I said in the beginning of this broadcast, when something is true, it's a universal truth. So I want to give him credit for this acronym because uh, what he shared really, I think, makes it, it really helps understand what it is that men and women want to experience in a relationship. And while this title says, this sets you apart from every other woman, you know, to some degree, this sets up you sets up a man apart from every other man. In other words, if men were watching my channel. So he came up with the acronym of PEACE. And when you think about home, 
You think about safety, you think about comfort, and you think about it's peaceful. There's just something when you're at home, hopefully you're experiencing this, not everybody might experience this when they're at home, but they're feeling a sense of peace. So the acronym he came up with, and again, I have to give him full credit for this. I cannot take credit for it, but I'm just going to give you my interpretation of this. The P stands for positive possibilities, positive possibilities. Okay. Now, if you remember my video from a couple of days ago, I talked about beginner's mindset, beginner's mindset. See, sadly in the dating realm today, we are operating, for those of us in midlife, okay, so let's be clear. Midlife is quite a bit different than those women in their 20s and 30s. You know, women, men and women in their 20s and 30s are like a blank sheet of paper. Their life is being formed. But for those of us in midlife, for those of us in midlife, we kind of have our lives grooved like the Grand Canyon to some degree. And so one of the things that comes with this grooving of our lives, grooving of our lives, groovy lives, grooving of our lives, is that we might have had some unhappy experiences, particularly when it comes to love. Many of us are, by the way, 75% of singles over 45 years old are divorced. And when you're divorced, you come with an unraveling of the tapestry of an old life. And what happens oftentimes is many people are stuck in negative possibilities. Why I mention beginner's mind is the idea is to approach every new person without the residue of somebody in your past, without the residue of somebody in your past. And, and look at every, like, I'll be candid with you. Look at, I know many of you are on the dating sites. I'm on the dating sites. I'm on dating apps. And when I see a notification come in, um, you know, statistically speaking, they're not going to be the one, just statistically speaking. But I always open up the email or I open up the app with a sense of positive possibilities because today might be the one. I want you to think of like... Um, I was going to say Einstein, but I want to say it's Edison who invented the light bulb. It's funny how the E name is stuck in my brain, Einstein, but it's Edison who created the light bulb. Okay. And within that, there, you know, the story is it took him 2,000 tries or 10,000 tries to make a light bulb. And someone asked him, you know, how does it feel to fail so many times? He said, I didn't fail 2,000 times. I just learned 2,000 ways not to make a light bulb. In other words, every single time he tried a new approach, he went at it with beginner's mind, with positive possibilities. And that's one of the things that will set you apart from everyone else, okay? The peace process. The E stands for embrace the present moment. Embrace the present moment, okay? Now, my interpretation of this is learning not to get ahead of yourself. And I think sadly, you know, there's an old, I remember a woman I was speaking to one time, I was coaching. She talked about back in the, um, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when women were dating and they liked a man, they would, they would well, if the guy's name was Jonathan Asley, we'll use me as the, or Matt Boggs, you know, if her name was Kathleen, she'd go Kathleen Asley, Kathleen Boggs, you know, in other words, trying out the person's last name. I think we get ahead of ourselves too quickly. Now, I want to share with you something that I witnessed from a friend of mine, and this might uh, resonate with you, it might not. She met a man online. She happened to be traveling abroad at the time. She was going to be out of the country for three months, and she met a man online, and they began um, talking, and they began talking via Zoom. And over the course of about a month, no, less than a month. They accumulated a hundred hours, a hundred hours of FaceTime, of Zoom time, with video chats with one another. Okay. And within that hundred hours, they decided he would fly out to meet her. And he flies out, gets an airplane. She's got a spare bedroom. He's going to stay in the spare bedroom. Although, wink, wink, did that really happen? And within 48 hours, she didn't like the guy anymore. Within 48 hours, 
I mean, all this anticipation was built up. All of this intensity was built up. They both jumped the gun. They got ahead of themselves. Embracing the present moment basically is being in your lane in the moment. It's not about getting ahead of yourself. That's my interpretation of embracing the present moment. Each time you're with somebody, it's a new experience. And it's important to be present in this experience. So again, just like beginner's mind, if you're stuck in the past, if you're, if you're jaded, you're bitter from the past, and you carry that with you, you're in, sometimes for some of you, it's impossible to be present in the moment because you're so stuck in the past. And I think when you clean up that energy, you have a greater chance for achieving relationship success. You know, it's difficult. By the way, have any of you practiced being present? I did an exercise once um, where I stared out a window, and this was taught to me, so I can't take credit for it. And I just noticed what was outside. I noticed a bird. I noticed a plane. I noticed the wind as the, as the trees were rustling. I noticed the, the leaves were rustling. And just being present to what I've noticed. See, so often, we're so worried about what to say next. We're so worried about pleasing somebody. We're so worried about making a good impression or worse. We're so oftentimes judging a person. Is he the right height? Does he have the right cologne on? You know, does his breath smell nice? You know, I mean, like the list goes on and on. There's all these judgments instead of being present to the moment. Embrace the present moment. That's the E. The A stands for accept yourself. Well, folks, I wrote a book about self-acceptance. It's called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Love and Spiritual Self-Help and Spiritual Work. Folks, one of the most critically important factors in a man looking at you different than other women is do you accept yourself or are you self-critical? Or are you judgmental of even other people, not even realizing that it's a reflection of yourself? Ah, self-acceptance. Boy, this is a hard one to do. Oftentimes, we have to peel layers upon layers upon layers of hurt, pain that we've experienced in our past. And it's so difficult to lean into what it feels like to just love yourself. Do you know, most of you know, I did the Hoffman process, and I always recommend reading the book, The Hoffman Process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and adult traumas. By the way, all the books I recommend are listed in the show notes and in the first comment. During the fifth day of the Hoffman process, we did a, it was uh, basically, it was a birthday exercise. It was a play date exercise, and it was literally a full day of play, like little kid kind of play. You just got to play in the playground. You got a little stuffed animal. Where's my stuffed animal? Oh, it's in my bedroom. I got a little, a little lion stuffed animal. So apropos for the Leo and me. At the end of the experience, I went outside. It was a beautiful night with all the stars out because we were in the mountains. And I knew what it felt like to be wrapped in a blanket of self-love. Wrapped in a blanket of self-love. I want you to picture, because that's what self-acceptance is. And this will set you apart from every other woman when you can embody that acceptance of yourself, that self-love, self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-reliance. See, self-love is about your individual sovereignty. And yet, sadly, so many of you women give your power away to men. But Jonathan, this is the way it's been taught to me. Men are the leaders of the relationship. And I must submit to men because this is what other coaches are telling me. Wrong. You are never supposed to submit to another person. You are a sovereign human being. Oh, a, a romantic relationship should be like a partnership. And I'm yelling right now. Okay, get into your calm. 
It's okay to yell, Jonathan. Folks, I am here to scream at the top of my lungs on this one because I cannot stand the rhetoric of you must submit to a man that the man is the leader of the relationship. And I want you to think of two attorneys, two doctors, two accountants that are going to start a firm together, a partnership together, and they have an 50-50 stake in the business. See, that's the way romantic relationship be. You don't need a leader in the relationship. You need two sovereign beings that say, let's co-create something together. Let's co-create something together. Now, I know many of you prefer the one-up, one-down type of dynamic, and I'm spitting right now. But I invite you, for those that are my audience, don't you ever, ever, ever settle for being beneath a man. And I know they're not selling it that way, but trust me, if you have a leader, that means they have veto power and you have veto power, not them, okay? I'm your big brother here. If I could be there for you on a first date, I'd have the shotgun pointed at the guy's face and saying, what's your intention with my little sister? Because my little sister has value and she is, sets, she is apart from every other woman out there. All right, I'm gonna get off my high horse here on my rant. That's the A, accept yourself, self-love. The C stands for certainty. See, folks, you guys are, by the way, you women are no picnic. Let me tell you something. You can be just as fucking flaky as men. I've witnessed this time and time again. You guys all want men that their actions match their words. Well, you better be fucking putting your money where your mouth is. Because guess what? A lot of you ladies are acting inconsistent. And if you're inconsistent, then we can't establish a level of trust with you. We can't establish a level of certainty with you. See, being at home, and remember I started this conversation of home, okay? See, home is all about peace. It's about comfort. It's about trust. And so if your actions don't consistently match your words, you act flaky, well, guess what? We won't trust you. You won't feel like home. You won't feel like a safe place. We'll go find another woman who operates that way. And I know you act like, oh, Jonathan, I'm different. No, you guys, all of you. Okay, not all of you. A lot of you can be fucking flaky. Okay, I'm done cursing there. And the E of peace stands for engage the fun. Again, this is Matt Boggs. This is mine. But I love the idea. I said this in the previous video as well. This mirrors something I just said. The importance to be playful, to be flirty, to be sensual. Like, what's the fucking point of being in a relationship if there isn't play, if there isn't, fl if there isn't flirtiness, if there isn't sexy sensuality? I mean, that's the whole point. And so what sets a woman apart is when she can embrace all of these that are listed. Now, why is it that many of you haven't embraced this? Because many of you, like, many of, like most of us, we've been hurt. We've been wounded. We don't trust. We're fearful. And if you're afraid, you can't embrace the positive possibilities. If you're afraid, you can't be present in the moment. If you're afraid, you don't accept yourself. If you're afraid, you're, you're acting uncertain. And if you're afraid, you're not going to be a fucking fun person to be with. So I invite you to use this peace process. And then one more last time, I got to give credit to Matt Boggs. Okay. Go watch his video. You can go to his channel. Just take this title, pop it into your search bar and you can watch his, but this is my interpretation of what it takes to set yourself apart from everyone else. And so he'll choose you versus another woman. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well.